What's up guys, it's Kayla and Jim. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Yes, yes, we're actually going to change up the format of this video and we're going to kind of have more of a discussion based video. So what we like to do is actually kick it off by saying, you know, in the US we are quickly approaching severe weather season and there's been one tool that's been added to the meteorological community over the past few years and that is drones. <laughs> drones. So. Today will be more of a discussion and get your input as well as to drones and have you used drones? What would you recommend for storm chasing? There's a lot of things that drones are used for in the meteorological community, such as damage assessment, and there's other applications as used as well, like in the insurance industry and so on and so forth. So we've got a couple of videos that we'll show later on uh, in this video, just to kind of show you how drones are used used applicable towards storm chasing as well as damage assessment. Let, let's start this off here. Yeah. You know what we're going to do? We're going to start off by changing the battery because I swear this thing said it had a full battery not five minutes ago. So <sighs> please hold. So the first question is, is what roles do drones play in storm chasing? Well, one thing I can think of is that a drone is, not only is it an extra tool in the toolbox, but it's also like that extra member that's part of your team that can go to areas where you can't get access to. One of the things I can think of is storm chasing, you can get it elevated above the tree line. Oh my gosh, if you chase in the southeast, you know, the struggle we have with there being trees everywhere. So yeah, if you have a drone, if he one of the main benefits would be seeing above the tree line. That's right. And just something even here in the southeast, just something as simple as it doesn't even need to go 10 feet from where you are <laughs> horizontally. Just as long as it can get up <laughs> above the tree line and see yeah. what's going on, it gives you a world of information that you won't have when you're down at ground level. Yeah. Another thing is if you're chasing a really large tornado or one that's kind of had a squiggly path and you're like eh, maybe we should not drive on the road right next to it because if it goes here we're gonna be in trouble you can send the drone there it's gonna be an expensive cost to replace <laughs> if it ends up getting hit by the tornado but it's a heck of a lot safer than driving your car there and risking injury uh to yourself and your chase partners and your vehicle so like you said, it actually helps reduce the risk to the chasers themselves as long as you know they position themselves accordingly. And you can get footage that you normally wouldn't be able to get unless you're taking either high risk or you know in a position where you had a lot of trees and you couldn't see anything, which that comes with a risk in and of its own. <laughs> so, uh, so drones do play a, a really significant part to storm chasing. Unless and one wants to climb a very tall pine tree with a camera. That is true. That is true. Is there anyone that has done that that we know has done that? Don't look at me. I <laughs> no! Now let's ask the question of what role do drones play in damage assessment? I think you probably know where I'm going with this as I've mentioned in the past like three videos, but since UNC Asheville was an undergraduate research school, one of the projects we had was using drones to assess damage here in the southeast. The project name was called Vortex Southeast, which that name might sound familiar to a couple of you if you are familiar with the original Vortex projects back in the in early 2000s. <laughs> I forget the dates exactly. <laughs> but the Vortex Southeast group from UNC Asheville, my school, and the University of Alabama at Huntsville, they would go out there with drones and see what kind of damage it was and get into the areas where maybe the roads were still blocked or wasn't safe for people to go because there were power lines down. They would use the drones to see what kind of damage there were and use that to accurately rate the tornadoes faster. 
One of the things that I've seen drones be used for, I mentioned earlier, was for the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. And they actually have software on some of these drones specific for these insurance companies. Maybe uh, the application expands a little further than that. But the drone can actually go and can actually look at, let's say, a house that was damaged. And it can actually use uh, its camera and the software to look at the surface area of the roof and, and walls and stuff like that and be able to determine damage based on the square footage and stuff like that so that they can properly do the assessment. It actually wound up speeding up claims because they could do two to three places of residence versus one a day because they'd have to physically be you know, right. on the roof which there's a risk there you know trying to get to it get on the roof assess get down look in the house with a drone it could fly around and do all the calculations itself so it's amazing what drones could do it's not just a matter of taking images it's also can calculate square footage of certain things that were destroyed so it very very interesting very interesting so we've just touched upon a lot of positives that come out of using drones while storm chasing. But there's gotta be some negatives, right? So, <laughs> what are some of the downsides or negatives to using a drone? That's right. So let's think of this logistically. You're going out chasing a severe storm. Mm -hmm. It might put down a tornado. Mm -hmm. So you're chasing, you get to a certain spot and you send it in there and you got strong winds. So you gotta make sure that the winds are not going to buffer it all over the place where it doesn't get a, a good image of the storm itself. You've got other weather hazards that come with a severe storm as well that is is hail if you're on the wrong side of the storm and hail starts to fall we know about that don't we that's right how, how does that impact the drone you've also got lightning oh yes so yes you have to be aware mm -hmm. that this might be the tallest object when you're chasing <laughs> so <laughs> especially if you're in an area that doesn't have trees that's right exactly uh you've also got heavy rain so visibility might get poor in some of your footage that you might capture and there's also the downburst winds. Will that drive your drone into the ground and, and wound up causing it damage or get it destroyed? So there's some things to consider when it comes to storm chasing and getting you know, the, the right tool for what you need to do. There's a lot of chasers that are out there that do use drones. Mm -hmm. uh, chasers across whether it's academia or whether it's private citizens or professionals. So we wanted to have this video be a discussion point but also to get your feedback as well. What are you guys using? Have you experienced some of these? Have you found certain things work better in certain environments than others? Let's get your feedback as well. Yeah, so we uh, currently do not have a drone as of this date in early 2023. Maybe the next time we do a video like this, we will have one. But as of right now, we do not. Like we previously stated, we live in the Southeast. In North Carolina, there are a lot of trees and it makes it very difficult to chase. We can easily get to a storm, but we can't really always see a storm. So we are in the market for a drone, which will hopefully bring better footage to you guys also bring some dope footage to <laughs> YouTube and Instagram, hopefully this coming storm season or maybe the next, depending. But yeah, if you've used it, if your friends have used it, if you're in college and your college uses it, or if you happen to be a fellow storm chaser and have one in your arsenal, please let us know what kind of drones you use and give us all the tips and pointers. <laughs> because uh, yeah, we don't want to invest in this and then fly it perhaps into a hail core. That's right. Um, but if we are flying it into a tornado, it means that we have picked the correct storm and there is a tornado. <laughs> and we'll at least get some cool footage before it disappears, but. Oh, that uh, also falls into the negative bucket. And I that know. is, <laughs> if we get sucked up by a tornado or, or downburst winds and it goes to an area that is inaccessible by you, which is why you sent the drone in the first place, you got to recover the drone. So, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> unless that footage is actually sent back and stored on a local hard drive, then your recovery of the drone can be depend on how you spend, you know, and where it lands. Yeah. Do you go get it? Do you not get it? Yeah, and you know, in the off chance that we do get this drone and it gets destroyed, uh, check out School of Weather, which is our <laughs> online courses, which teaches you the basics of meteorology if you're interested and learning about some of the topics that will be covered in a college level meteorology intro class. Go check those out. We have two tiers currently. The first one is the beginner's guide to meteorology. The second one is a high risk of learning and other severe weather topics. Um, so go support uh, your fellow Meteotech weather fam and get you some online courses and learn about the basics of meteorology. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Product placement. <laughs>
One of the last things we want to talk about is how state and local laws are applicable to flying drones. Please. Now we do have the occasion to travel outside North Carolina and do chasing every once in a while. So we just kind of figured, you know what, let's talk to you guys as well and see, have you run into any issues with state and local laws, any ordinances when it comes to flying drones? We'd have to do our research as well. Yeah. Again, it may even depend on the type of drone that you get has different rules and regulations to it. Again, we're still new to this process, but yes. we definitely want to add it to our Storm Chasers toolbox. Yes. So there you have it, a talk about drones. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this new video format and uh, for the foreseeable future, we will be hanging out down in the comments with you guys, continuing this discussion. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know your advice. Down in the description box, you will find the links to that school of weather that we were talking about earlier, as well as our website. As always, while you're down there, leave a like and hit the subscribe button so you never miss the next Meteorology Monday. Follow us over on our Weather Adventures, Facebook and Instagram popping up here. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. See you next week. <laughs>